closed. As soon as everybody has got the text, I will start. And before that, a small introduction to what we are discussing and the relevance to the paragraph that we are going to read. Okay. So, okay, I'm starting. So, what Sri is discussing throughout Life Divine is what is this reality and unreality that we are suddenly seeing? First, we think that the, the world is real, and then suddenly, with the, uh, in the spiritual experience, and spiritual is not ordinary experience, you suddenly say that the world is not as real as you thought. What is this great mystery? So, how to solve it? So, then, is really the world unreal or is it real? So then he analyzes and sees that, no, it is not like that. The problem is not the reality or the unreality of the world. The world is very real. The forms are real and the essence also behind the divine presence also is real. Then what is the problem? The problem is that your consciousness is limited at the lower level. And when it is limited at the lower level, you are using instruments of knowledge which are defective. So that we have to see. So now what he is saying? Okay, we have established that the instruments of knowledge are defective. But where does this, when does it become perfect? Is there a place where the instruments of knowledge become perfect? So let us examine this question. And then you see that there is a gradation of consciousness. The animals have less consciousness than man. Man has less consciousness than the yogi. So there is a gradation of consciousness. So how far does it go? And where at the height, at which height is the Ignorance beginning is the imperfection of man's understanding. Where is it beginning? This is what is the background. Okay. So, very clear. We have stated exactly what the problem is. So, now Sunday is saying, we have seen that there is a super mind and it is full of light because we can get a glimpse of that. And there is no ignorance there in the super mind. But as soon as it comes down to the over mind, the ignorance starts. So let us look at this phenomena. That's what he's saying. Okay. So he's saying there's a final lid. There's a lid between a lid made of light, but this light is translucent, not transparent. The window pane can be translucent and transparent. Transparent means you will have to see through clearly, and there'll be no problem at all. You can see through the window and you will see what is outside the window, you will see perfectly well. But if it is translucent, then it is a, it is a uh, smoky type of glass and only the light comes through, but no significant images don't come through. So he's saying luminous obscuration. This is, it's a, <clears throat> the lid that is there between the higher supermind and the lower over mind is a luminous obscuration. That's what he has used in the earlier. It is light. But still, it does not allow the light to come in fully. It is obscure <laughs> luminosity. So, note the interesting way Sarandha puts it with an oxymoron, okay, opposites. Then he says, again, he uses another word, unsubstantial barrier. It is a barrier. It's like a, a fence which is not at all a very secure fence. You can kick the fence. Suppose you're going into a house and the, uh, the fence that is separating the house from the road is a very uh, flimsy thing. You give it one kick, it opens up. So it's an unsubstantial barrier. It's a barrier, but unsubstantial. You can easily go from, not easily, but you can go from the overmind to the supermind. It's possible. Okay. <clears throat> it's possible theoretically. You can go, but it's a very, very high level of consciousness and it's not that easy. But once you have gone to the overmind, you can get glimpses of the super mind. You can get glimpses, but to go and live there permanently is something else altogether. So, with this background, now we start reading each sentence of this one. We have then to scrutinize more closely than we have yet done the character and operation of this principle or this power of ignorance and arrive at a clearer conception of its nature and origin. So, this ignorance defined as seeing the many and not seeing the one. That is ignorance. Okay? Seeing the one is a different type of, and you call that 
vidya you call that knowledge but seeing the many and thinking that they are real is the avidya is the not is the ignorance that is our condition we see all the many things and we think that they are real they are real in a sense in time and space they are real but they are ultimately in the ultimate sense they are not real because they disappear okay so this is unsubstantial by so we have then to scrutinize more closely than we have yet done the character and operation of this principle or this power of ignorance so ignorance is a power it's not something negative <laughs> that's interesting it is the power of knowledge to reduce itself okay so and arrive at a clear conception of its nature and origin and where is it beginning okay i have already told you he tells you later on that is the or the overmind consciousness that is the beginning okay so he said let us understand what we mean by knowledge and ignorance okay you must understand firmly the distinction between the knowledge and the ignorance begins with the hymns of the rig veda it is there very clearly they have given what is avidya and what is vidya vidya is knowledge avidya is ignorance here knowledge appears to signify a consciousness of the truth the rit right ritam satyam ritam okay so this is the in the veda here knowledge appears to signify a consciousness of the truth the right satyam ritam and of all that is of the order of the truth and the right okay and right ignorance is an unconsciousness achitti of the truth and right we are not seeing the truth and the right an opposition to its workings and a creation of false or adverse workings the this is the definition in the rigveda as it is saying it appears to be because he will now when we say achitti there is a negative connotation okay but shrimdu will tell you that in one angle from one angle it is true that it is negative but from another point of view it is not negative it's a stance that the divine takes okay he himself has decided that there will be light at the highest level and there will be darkness at the lowest level so where is the negativity it is decided that we should be like that i want to see the divine says i want to see at the lower level i want to see only the many and i want to see only the one at the highest level i want to see formlessness so then the negativity disappears that is the reason why in shrimdo philosophy there is nothing negative absolutely not <clears throat> in one way there is a negativity in this sense that when you are in one level it is not so easy to go to another level there is an incapacity it takes a lot of effort to go up in that sense it is negative but otherwise it's not negative at all it's a divine decision so a divine decision cannot be wrong it cannot be because the idea of right and wrong is a mind originated concept there is no right and wrong from one angle but from if you uh, Uh, extend that philosophy to everything in the physical world you will be in trouble <laughs> because there is there is something wrong and there is something right and you have to go from the wrong to the right or if you want to see it from the spiritual point of view you have to go from a lesser level to a higher level that's all okay so that is what civil servants view of things okay so now that's why he's using the word appears the distinction between the knowledge and the ignorance begins with the hymns of the rigveda here knowledge appears okay to signify a consciousness of truth the right satyam ritam and of all that is of the order of the truth and right the ignorance is an unconsciousness so immediately when you see unconsciousness and achitti you get a negative feeling the negativity is right in a certain way at the lower level it is right but if you go to the higher level it's only a definition it's only words using to describe some particular thing okay unconsciousness and achitti from the spiritual point of view is a word 
which designates that you are seeing only the many without seeing the one. That's all. No negativity. But anyway, so, but if you are at the lower level, it is a negative thing. Achitti of the truth and right. An opposition to its workings and a creation of false or adverse workings. Ignorance is the absence of the divine eye of perception, which gives us the sight of the supermental truth. The divine eye sees the sight of the supermental truth. But it is the absence of the divine eye at the lower level. It is the non-perceiving principle in our consciousness as opposed to the truth perceiving conscious vision and knowledge. Okay. So there's a footnote, achitti and chitti. Okay. Chit is consciousness. Chitti is a state of being conscious and achitti is a state of being unconscious. In its actual operation, this non-perceiving is an entire inconscious. In its actual operation, okay, this non-perceiving is an entire inconscious. It is a sleep which the divine has decided that I want to sleep. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the word is being used, entire inconscious. The inconscient see from which the world has arisen. Okay. So there is a footnote. We'll read that footnote. And the footnote is Apratetam salilam. Salilam, water. <laughs> like, like Shalila. <laughs> Our Dr. Shalila. <laughs> water. Apratetam. Praketam, unconscious. Yes. So, unconscious ocean. Okay. That's what he <coughs> said. This is the, as described in the Veda. The unconscious is a sea, a vast, infinite sea of darkness. But either a limited or a false knowledge, again, Sunki is uh, uh, internet is uh, uh, again, it has come back. <laughs> okay, so, but either a limited or a false knowledge, a knowledge based on the division of undivided being. Actually, there is no division at all. Uh, Hiding behind the seeming division is the undivided oneness. Founded upon the fragmentary, the little opposed to the opulent, vast and luminous completeness of things. He is describing the, he is defining the ignorance. It is the absence of the divine eye which sees the whole. Okay. And it is also in its actual operation. That means at the lower level, it is a thing that does not allow you to see the oneness, but you see only the division. That's what he's saying. But either limited or a false knowledge. So now look at that. Either limited. If it is limited, it is not false. It's only limited. Or it can be seen as a false knowledge. So, a knowledge based on the division of undivided being. Because it's only a limitation and you are not seeing the undivided being. Founded upon the fragmentary, little opposed to the opulent, opulent, wealthy, rich, okay, full of variety and brilliance, vast and luminous completeness of things. This is the definition of ignorance and vidya. Vidya is that it makes you see the oneness and the beauty and the whole, the richness. And avidya is that it does not allow you to see that. Vast richness, okay, wealth, okay, of things. It's a cognition which, by the opportunity of its limitations, is turned into falsehood. Yeah, yeah. You see there, go behind the language and you'll see. <laughs> the limitations actually turn into falsehood, okay, because you are. You are subject to limitations, and in your consciousness, the limitations become falsehood. And this falsehood is real at the lower level because it is supported in that aspect by the sons of darkness and division, okay, the hostile forces, the enemies of the divine endeavor in man. They are the assailants, robbers, coverers of his light of knowledge. It is therefore regarded, it was therefore regarded as the undivine Maya, 
Okay, the Maya, the formation of false images. Okay, Adevi Maya. So not the divine Maya, but the Adevi Maya, the undivine Maya. The undivine Maya is that which makes you see only illusions and only the falsity. And the divine Maya is at the highest level. It is the power to create real forms. And again, we come to the idea of the gradation. As you keep going up, everything starts changing. The so-called undivine elements that you see here slowly start shedding their undivineness and they become divine elements. So this is the what you see. So it depends at which level you are seeing and how you are seeing. So there is nothing absolutely undivine or undivine. in the uh, chapter in the life divine also the divine and the undivine. Okay, he also describes that there is nothing undivine. Everything is only graded, graded divinity. Even the darkness is a divine creation. Okay, so. And there, now these are the words used in the um, uh, Vritra, Panis, these are all the words they are used. And robbers, they are saying robbers because when you have a spiritual experience and these uh, hostile forces come and take away these uh, experiences. So that's why you should keep it a secret. That is one of the reasons why they say don't speak about your spiritual experiences. Because the moment you make it known, these <laughs> hostile forces come and take it away. You lose your what you have gained. Okay. That's what he's saying. So assailants, they attack you actually. Robbers, coverers, vritra of the light of Maya. It was therefore regarded as an undivine Maya. That which creates false mental forms and appearances. Note the word mental forms, not the real forms in the physical world. They are forms which your mind is making you see unreality. They are false mental forms and appearance. Appearance again, not the reality. It's only a, an appearance, the outer form. And hence, the later significance of this word, which seems to have meant originally a formative power of knowledge, a true magic of the supreme mage, the divine magician, but was also used for the adverse formative power of a lower knowledge, the deceit, illusion, and deluding magic of the Rakshasa. At the highest level, purest form of power to create. And when it starts coming down, coming down and manifesting in the physical world, this Maya becomes the undivine Maya, the Rakshasi Maya, that which creates illusions. Okay? Not real forms, but illusory forms. The reality of the form starts becoming less and less and less and less. And finally, it becomes here a shadow. It's like a clear image on top. And that clear image starts becoming out of focus slowly, slowly, slowly. And when you come to the bottom, you see only the silhouette. You don't see the full form at all. You only see the silhouette. Okay. So, that's why Sri they use the word silhouette in his... Uh, Poem, okay, in Nirvana, he says the world is only silhouetted forms. Only the silhouette is seen. The whole form is not seen. Okay, so, <clears throat> but was used for the okay. So the divine Maya. So the deluding magic of the Rakshasa. There is a very interesting letter of somebody writing to Sri Rando, Okay, that he had a vision in which his whole house is burning, and he says that the vision was so real that he felt really that the house is burning. And Sri Aurobindo tells him, yes, this experience is that of the Rakshasik Maya. Okay? You feel that what you are, your vision is absolutely true. It is so uh, deluding. Okay? The deluding magic of the Rakshasa. And he put an R cap. It's a real spiritual experience. But note interestingly that these Rakshasas are all at the vital level. Okay? The moment you go above into the spiritual planes of consciousness, there are automatic difficulties, but they are not rakshasic difficulties. But if you are open at the vital level, then the hostile forces will attack you. <clears throat> but once you have stationed your consciousness above, higher mind onwards, then there is no rakshasa and there are no uh, hostile forces. 
We have said that in a letter. So, it was therefore regarded as an undivine Maya, that which creates false mental images and appearances. And hence, the later significance of this word, which seems to have meant originally a formative power of knowledge, true forms it creates. The true magic of the supreme mage, the divine magician, but was also used for the adverse formative power of the lower knowledge, the deceit, illusion, and deluding magic of the Rakshas. The divine Maya is the knowledge of the truth of things, its essence, law, operation, which the gods possess, and on which they found their own eternal action and creation. Again, there is a footnote, and we'll see. Devanam Adabdha Vratani. Okay, so this is what we in this aspect. This is referring and translating. Okay. Adabdha, that which is not forced down, action, action and creation. And the building of their powers in the human being. And what are the powers in the human being? Matter, life and mind. And they can become perfect also. But at the lower level, they are all assume imperfection. Okay? And the building of their powers in the human being. This idea of the Vedic mystics can, in a more metaphysical thought and language, be translated into the conception that the ignorance is in its origin a dividing mental knowledge which does not grasp the unity, essence, self-law of things in their one origin and in their universality, but works rather upon divided particulars, separate for phenomena, partial relations, as if they were the truth we had to seize, or as if they could really be understood at all, without going back behind the division to the unity, behind the dispersion, dispersion to the universality. So, very clear. Dispersion is the outer forms. The essence has dispersed itself into outer forms. Okay? And the universality which is behind, the universality is the oneness. So, that is the definition of ignorance. That's what Sergei is saying. You can think of it in that way. That's what he's saying. In a more metaphysical thought and language. Note because the Vedas, there is no metaphysical thought and there is no philosophy in the Vedas. But you can translate what the Vedas are saying into metaphysical language, then this is what means. You are seeing the oneness or you are seeing the many. So, and the many are only appearances. So this is how it is defined. Okay? And, <clears throat> and when you are seeing the many, you are under the power of the maya at the lower level, which is making you see only the many and nothing else but works rather upon divided particulars, separate phenomena. We are seeing only the outer forms, partial relations, as if they were the truth. And we had to, there's no and, we, and the truth we had to seize, or as if they could really be understood at all without going back behind the division to the unity, behind the dispersion to the universal. Now the knowledge, which is the knowledge? The knowledge is that which tends towards unification and attaining to the supramental faculty seizes the oneness, the essence, the self-law of existence and views and deals with the multiplicity of things out of that light and plenitude in some sort as does the divine himself from the highest height where when he embraces the world. So, at his highest height is the transcendental. And when he embraces the world, it is a cosmic. Okay? It must be noted, however, that the ignorance in this conception of it is still a kind of knowledge. Exactly. That's what we were saying. It is not something negative. It's a kind of knowledge. It's a limited knowledge. It's not an imperfect knowledge in a certain sense, but it is a kind of knowledge. It's a limited knowledge. But because it is limited, it is, sorry, okay. just one second, I will post it In its, ah, 
the, uh, in this it is because it is limited it is open at any time at any point sorry to the intrusion of falsehood and error it turns into a wrong conception of things which stands in opposition to the true knowledge so to summarize what he is saying he is defining knowledge and ignorance and he is saying depending at which level you are it can be negative and it can also be positive so if you are at the higher level it is not negative it is the power of knowledge to limit itself and seem to be ignorant and the knowledge can be defined as seeing the oneness and ignorance is seeing the many without seeing the oneness this is what he said okay so depending at which level you are but we must not think that the ignorance that we are seeing here we are seeing only the many is uh, is uh, not negative we must not think like that because if you are at the lower level actually in the actuality of things as he has said it is true that there is a limitation and you have to get rid of your limitation and both these things seeing of the oneness and seeing of the many are both defective same to say you have to go to a level where you see both the oneness as well as the many in fact that's exactly what sevendra says and it is also there in the isha upanishad the isha upanishad says when you are seeing the many you are in ignorance when you are seeing only the many sorry and when you are seeing only the ignorance it is a sort of darker ignorance <laughs> so you must be able to see both oneness as well as the many and that is possible at the supramental level there there is no ignorance there is no shortage there is no limitation at all this is a total this is what is saying in the paragraph we have 15 minutes more 15 uh, even more we have got nearly 16 17 minutes so we read the next one okay so very clearly he has defined and he has told you where the ignorance is starting okay over mind level so shall we read the next one so ki yesterday you didn't read today you read is your internet okay yeah <laughs> in the vedantic thought mm -hmm. okay let me let me in the vedantic thought of the upanishad we find the original vedic terms replaced by the familiar antinomy of vidya and abidya and with the change of terms there has come a certain development of significance for since the nature of knowledge is to find the truth and the fundamental truth is the one the veda speaks repeatedly of it as that truth and that one vidya knowledge in its highest spiritual sense came to mean purely and transcendently the knowledge of the one the knowledge of the one abidya ignorance purely and transcendently the knowledge of the divided many divided divided the many divorced as in our world it is divorced from the unifying consciousness of the one reality the complex associations the rich contents the luminous penumbra of the varied and corollary ideas and significant figures which belonged to the conception of the vedic words were largely lost in a language in, in a language more precise and metaphysical less psychological and flexible still the la the later exaggerated idea of absolute separation from the true truth of self and spirit of an original illusion of a consciousness that can be equated with dream or with hallucination did not at first enter into the vedantic conception of the ignorance if in the upanishads it is declared that the man who lives and moves within the ignorance wonders about stumbling like a like a blind man led by by the blind and returned ever to the net of death which is the which is spread wide for him it is also affirmed elsewhere in the upanishads that he who follows after the knowledge only knowledge only enters as if into a blinder darkness that he he who follow after the ignorance and that 
the man who knows Brahman as both the ignorance and the knowledge, as both the one and the many, as both the becoming and the non-becoming, crosses by the ignorance, by the experience of the, of the multiplicity, beyond the death, and by the knowledge, takes possession of immortality. For the self-existent has really become these many existences. The Upanishads can say to the divine being in all solemnity and with no thought to mislead, Thou art this old man walking with his staff, yonder boy and girl, this blue-winged bird that red of eye. Not thou seems sim, sim, to be these things, to the self-deluding mind of the ignorance. The status of becoming is inferior to the status of being, but still it is the being that becomes all that is in the universe. So he's quoting from the Isha Upanishad and the Shweta after the Upanishad. So we'll have a look at what he's saying. So. I'm getting the text, just one second. Yeah. So, in the Vedantic thought of the Upanishad, we find the original Vedic terms replaced by the original Vedic terms, okay, the Vidya and the Avidya, okay, so, uh, and the original Vedic terms, um, I think he's using uh, the truth consciousness, na? or those words he's using. So, by the familiar antinomy of Vidya and Avidya, and with the change of uh, uh, terms, there has come a certain development of significance, because the idea of the imperfection comes in. With the change of terms, there has come in a certain development of significance. For since the nature of the knowledge is to find the truth and the fundamental truth is the one, the Veda speaks repeatedly on that truth and that one. Vidya, knowledge, in its highest spiritual sense, came to mean purely and transiently the knowledge of the one, avidya. Okay. So, it is taken a slightly limited sense. Ignorance, purely and transiently, the knowledge of the divided many, divorced as in our world, as in our world it is divorced from the unifying consciousness of the one reality. So, slightly the negative connotation has come. In. That's what he said. The complex associations, the rich contents, the luminous penumbra of varied and corollary ideas and significant figures which belong to the conception of the Vedic words were largely lost in a language more precise and metaphysical, less psychological and flexible. So what she's saying in the Veda, the idea of negativity is not there. It's only a definition of the one state of oneness and one state of the seeing the many. But in the Upanishads, when you are trying to give it metaphysical long language, it speaks on slightly negative terms. That's what he's saying. Okay. So that one trenchily, as in our word given from the unifying court. The complex associations, you, know, you can see define in so many different ways. That's what we have discussed already today. The rich contents, there's a great richness in the way you see things, okay? You should not see the limitations as something false, okay? But you can see if you are at the lower level. That's the whole point. That's why it is rich, okay? The luminous penumbra, now note again, penumbra, umbra, darkness. Penumbra, semi-darkness. The word, when you add the word pen, it becomes half, like ultimate and penultimate. Ultimate is the last and penultimate is the one before the last. So, penumbra, half light, okay? Luminous half light, okay? Of varied and corollary ideas and significant figures which belong to the construction of Vedic words were largely lost in a language more precise and metaphysical less psychological and flexible. So, you have to now, you can start interpreting the limited um, 
knowledge which is ignorance in a negative sense. That's what he's saying. Still, the later exaggerated idea of absolute separation from the true truth of self and spirit, of an original illusion, of a consciousness that can be equated with dream or with hallucination, did not at first enter into the Vedantic conception of the ignorance. If in the Upanishads, it is, so he's saying even in the Upanishads, okay, this idea of darkness is not necessarily seen as um, something negative. Because he is referring to the very clearly, uh, I will um, write down the uh, Isha Upanishad verses later on. Okay, I have not noted that, but the, I told you that it says that if you are seeing only the many, you are in ignorance. But if you are seeing only the one in the spiritual planes of consciousness, then that's a greater darkness. <laughs> so you have to see both together. So there is no question of the. Uh, the negativity, okay? So, it's a way of seeing. You are seeing the many and you are seeing the one. <laughs> you have to see both together. If in the Upanishads it is declared that the man who lives and moves within the ignorance wanders about stumbling like a blind man, led by the blind, and returns ever to the net of death which is spread wide for him, okay, after every death, he goes and takes birth again, okay? But he's coming down where? He's coming down into the net of death until he realizes his soul and then he's free. So, into the net of death, which is spread wide for him. It is also affirmed elsewhere in the Upanishads that he who follows the knowledge only enters as if into a blinder darkness than he who follows after the ignorance. Okay? And the knowledge as both the one and the many as both the becoming and the non-becoming crosses by the ignorance, by the experience of the multiplicity beyond death and by the knowledge, the exposition of immortality. So, this is the, I'll put down the, uh, tomorrow also is life divine, I'll try and put down the uh, Isha Upanishad verses. Now he shifts, shifts to the Shweta Shweta Upanishad. <coughs> <coughs> For the self existing has really become these many existences. The Upanishad can say to the divine being in all solemnity, in all sincerity and seriously, not as a joke, okay, but with no thought to mislead. There's no attempt to mislead you, it's, it's the truth. Thou art this old man walking with his star, yonder boy and girl, this blue-winged bird, that head of eye, all these are you only, you are everything in the physical world. Not thou seemest to be these things. It's not that you seem to be these things, you have become these things. Again, we go back to the Upanishad formula of the one in the many, the many in the one, and the one becoming the many. <coughs> In that the one becoming the many is there right in the first or second paragraph of chapter one of Life Divine, if you remember. Okay. Matter is not only a fit instrument for bearing, okay, it's a robe that the divine wears, but it is not only a substance which the divine uses for clothing himself, but he himself is the cloth, he himself is the robe. The matter he is Brahman. He says, so that is what he is referring to here also again. Okay? He is saying, not thou seemest to be these things. It is not seeming. It is a real thing. It is self, this self-deluding mind of the ignorance. The status of becoming is inferior to the status of being. But still, it is being that becomes all that is in the universe. Okay, so this is what he is saying, that there is no negativity. There is only a way of seeing. Okay? It's a divine that has divided all these things. He has made the gradation from the highest to the lowest. And depending on how you are seeing, you can see it as negative or you need not see it as negative at all. But if you are at the lower level, yes, you have to see the negativity and go beyond the negativity to the positivity. That's what you say. <coughs> That's why it is so rich and so varied and so complex. 
<laughs> the truth. Okay, so we have got three minutes left. We can stop here today. No? So, <clears throat> it's okay. Tomorrow yes, we'll yes. start the, but the development. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll make a note. Okay. Guru Har, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you, Ragatma. Thank you, Ragatma.